Welcome back to Bake Lore and More, where history gets a side of humor. I'm your host, Steph, and today we're diving into a topic that's a little hard to stomach, literally. We're talking about the bizarre and belt-busting world of competitive eating. It's a sport, yes, sport, where the athletic feat is measured not in yards run or goals scored, but in hot dogs, pies, and burgers devoured. Born in the backyards and fairgrounds, competitive eating has grown into a spectacle of gastronomic proportions, complete with its own superstars, intense rivalries, and jaw-dropping records. It's a story that stretches back to county fairs and local festivals. But the modern world of competitive eating really took off in the late 90s and early 2000s. It was then that eating went from a fun fair activity to a full-blown competitive sport, complete with televised events and major corporate sponsorships. We're not just talking about a casual pie-eating contest at the county fair. We're diving into events where seasoned athletes train their stomachs to handle an insane amount of food, where techniques and strategies are discussed and debated, and where eating a few hot dogs is just the appetizer. Welcome to the table. The feast is about to begin. We're talking about events like Nathan's Hot Dog Eating Contest, an annual 4th of July tradition that's part sports event, part circus, and all entertainment. Eaters, or gurgitators as they're sometimes known, train like athletes, mastering techniques like the Solomon Technique or the Water Dunk, all to gulp down hot dogs faster than the eye can see. But it's not just hot dogs. There's the Acme Oyster Eating Contest in New Orleans, where shellfish shucking meets speed eating. Or the Wing Bowl in Philadelphia, a pre-Super Bowl event that turned chicken wings into a competitive sport. And let's not forget the World Pie Eating Championship in England, because who doesn't love a good pie? Now, the faces of this world. Competitive eating has its legends, the titans of the table. Joey Jaws Chestnut, for instance, a name that's become synonymous with the sport. He's the Michael Jordan of mastication, known for shattering records and belts alike. Then there's Takaru Kobayashi, the Japanese eating sensation who revolutionized the sport with his technique and training. These eaters aren't just sitting down to a meal. They're athletes in their own right. They train, they strategize, and they push their bodies to the limits. It's a mental game as much as a physical one. Techniques vary from the chipmunking of filling one's cheeks before swallowing to the water dunk, where eaters dunk buns in water to ease swallowing. In this world, records are made to be broken and stomachs are stretched to their limits. It's a spectacle of consumption where speed, strategy, and an iron stomach are the keys to victory. But it's not just physical, it's mental. Competitive eaters must overcome the body's natural signals to stop eating pushing through the wall to keep going. Mental toughness is key, as is a strategic approach to each contest. Eaters study their food like opponents, looking for advantages, whether it's the optimal temperature for pizza or the best way to tackle a plate of wings. And let's talk about recovery after consuming thousands of calories in minutes. Competitive eaters have their post-contest routines down to a science from fasting and light workouts to specific diets to rebalance their digestive systems. Recovery is as much a part of the process as the eating itself. In this world, your competitors are your comrades. Your stomach is your strongest muscle, and every bite is a step towards victory or defeat. Competitive eating might seem like a simple sport of who can eat the most the fastest, but as we've seen, it's a complex dance of physical prowess, mental fortitude, and tactical precision. Behind every plate piled high with hot dogs, every tray of oysters, and each pie tin, there's a story. These aren't just eaters. They're people with passions, dreams, and an appetite for more than just food. They come from all walks of life from the student who discovered they had a unique talent at a college eating contest, to the office worker who traded spreadsheets for speed eating as a form of escape and expression. In a way, it holds up a mirror to society, reflecting our fascinations, our excesses, and our communal spirit. As we close this chapter on competitive eating, we're reminded that it's a world filled with flavor, fervor, and a fair share of folly. It teaches us that sometimes, to find out what we're made of, we have to bite off more than we can chew. Here at Baked Lore and More, 
We believe every slice of life deserves its moment in the spotlight, no matter how saucy or stuffed. If you need more lore for your plate, make sure you subscribe so you stay satiated. Until next time, keep your plates full and your hearts fuller.